If you didn't see the article that this uh, video was originally posted with, um, we're talking a little bit about uh, the bolts here. Um, this particular hub has studs. Actually, that stud looks kind of like this down inside uh, there. This is obviously a new one, um, but it pokes through from the back and it's anchored in all of this uh, material right here. It sticks out, the thread sticks out then, and uh, to hold the wheel on, then we put a nut on the outside of it. As we mentioned in the article, this nut has a taper on it. That taper there fits on the inside of the wheel. Each one of these holes has a little bit of a taper on the inside of it that matches the taper on the nut so that when the nut goes on it sits down in there nice and neat right on that taper and that is actually what centers the wheel is the the uh, bunch of these all five of them then pulling evenly on whatever location that they are and nesting in that nice uh, taper there with this taper that's what centers the wheel so if you look at the hub again we see that there's nothing here um, and you can see that with the dirt here there's nothing here that centers that wheel the wheel just sits on there loose and it's centered then by the uh, the nuts and so that's why it's really important so the other way and I think we described this in the article that uh, sometimes this is done if this hub has instead of having the threaded stud sticking out it has a thread in then we would use a bolt like this which is tapered and it does exactly the same function where it goes in the wheel and then would thread into the the hub obviously that's not what this is but um, that is the other way that we sometimes see it is with these tapered bolts instead of a tapered nut so now when we put the wheel on, simply line it up with all those studs and it will go back and fit against there. Now if you look at this real close, you can see that that stud has more space underneath than it does on top because it's actually resting on top. So when we put our nuts in, it will actually lift this wheel just a little bit. I'm going to put two nuts on so that you can see what I'm what I'm talking about. Let me pause right here for a second in putting these on. One of the mistakes that I see people make is they, they will take one of these sides, run this nut all the way down thinking that that's now tight. And in fact if I put my wrench on it I can tighten it and it feels sort of tight, but in reality, there's a little bit of space. I don't know if that's uh, you can see that in the video or not. There's a little tiny bit of space on the other side of it because the wheel has not rested neat and nicely against the hub. It feels like it has, but it hasn't because we haven't got any of the other bolts holding down the other side. So now we have two bolts in there, and we can see by looking at this one now is centered pretty well in the hole, which is uh, exactly what we were talking about. For the sake of argument, because this is the way uh, I tell people not to do it, is not to tighten one or two first, I'm just going to loosen these a little bit so that everything, when I get this on, I put all five of them on, get the wheel to go up nice against the hub, together against the wheel. I'm going to take and do a little bit of turning in a star pattern so that every time I go across, I'm going to go across and just do a regular star pattern. And now I'm going to set this onto the ground. Because at this point, I'm, I'm certain that the wheel is hard against the, the hub. Let's just set this at uh, 80 foot-pounds. 90 is usually a really good number to use for wheel lugs.
So one uh, thing I noticed on a couple of YouTube videos that I watched was a, uh, a falseness, if you will. When you use this kind of a torque wrench that has the, uh, the clicker style torquing, um, just because you stick it on there and it clicks does not necessarily mean it's at the correct torque. If you're tightening it and it's moving up to that click, then yes, that does mean that's exactly what it means. But if I just put this torque wrench on and it clicks without moving the nut, then I don't know if it's the right torque or if it's over torqued. And over torquing can be a problem too. So if you don't know, and this is the kind of torque wrench you have, then the best thing to do is to loosen the bolt just a little, or the nut a little bit, and then retorque it to the right spec. And that way you know whether it's uh, correct or not. Just a random piece of information, I guess. So just for completeness, I wanted to show this other style of torque wrench. The clicker style is all great and wonderful in its ways, but uh, there is this other style that will tell you exactly what uh, torque you're at. This particular one only goes to 75 foot-pounds. Um, it's a little bit small for uh, doing trailer tires, but uh, it will illustrate. So you really should pull up on the one side as you push down on the other to get it truly a torque. But you can see then how much torque is actually applied um, as you apply torque on the wheel. So with that style, you can tell exactly what it is, uh, the torque that the nut is, but you have to go until the nut starts to move. Because as you saw right there, if I just twist, I can say it any torque. That just tells me the torque I'm applying. When the nut actually starts to move, that's the torque that is actually on the nut. So that, again, that's another style.